Hmm. In this article, we will be able to see many different examples of why everything these days is just really whack. Mainly <coughs> entertainment. Uh, mainly, you know, fictional storytelling entertainment. So, War of the Worlds Review, Episode 3. Too patronising to be an anti-colonialist colonialist allegory. Right, too patronising to be an anti-colonialist allegory. Uh, so this is in The Independent, and you know, if you make something rubbish but it's got a message, usually these kind of media outlets will love it anyway. Because, um, you know, it's got a message though! Um, so any old toss gets by. And if you can't please The Independent, well, who can you please? You know, The Independent is like the progressive left-wing version of a, you know, 13-year-old schoolboy. you just got to show him just a little bit of booby and um, literally bust it everywhere. But, anyway, I haven't seen this War of the Worlds adaption, um, but I understand that the War of the Worlds adaption is actually one that's set in the time that the book is. You know, like the, H, the, um, the 50s movie is, is set in the 1950s, and the Steven Spielberg one is set in... Whenever it was made, it was the noughties, I think. Um, but this one's, you know, set at the time it was written. Although they have got it wrong here, saying H.G. Wells' 1989 disaster novel. Apparently he wrote this book, you know, when he was um, 190, making him the world's oldest man. That's interesting. Anyway, the penny drops for race spools George in the third and final episode of The War of the Worlds. I said, I haven't seen this. I ain't seen it. But... I just read this and I was like, I don't need to. This is what we do, isn't it? He says, as the Martians continue to wreak havoc, violent havoc upon England's green and pleasant lands. We've been doing this to people for years. People who don't know better. Just think it would, ha it would have been like for a man in the jungle to have seen white people for the first time. To not have received friendship, but death. <laughs> Wonderful. <clears throat> this is the whole thing of, did you get the message? Did you get the message? That is um, a real crowbarring end of a message, isn't it? And look, for starters, the reason why this is a great example of why everything is whack. One, you, you know that the person who wrote, you know, who adapted this, put that in there and thought, my God, this is so clever. Oh my God, this is so clever. Oh my God. No one ever seen this one coming. This is so clever because, like, it's the same because it's like people from another place invading, and you don't know why it's happening. Uh, it's like as if anyone couldn't make that allegory from any alien invasion movie, like Independence Day, even like anything. It's pretty easy to do. It's like it's very obvious. Um, uh, so that makes it whack, it's like, and just throwing that in there. Because the whole thing about a lot of great art is, is what you take away from it, you know. It can be open to interpretation. Whether the person who wrote it had a certain allegory in mind or whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's what you take away from it. It's, you see? So that gives things a rich tapestry and it makes people think, you know. Um, and also, in one of the... I don't know if, you've, if you're familiar with... One of the very basic and, um, you know, one of the things about writing for the screen, whether it be television or movies, you know, one of the biggest rules is, is um, show, don't tell. Uh, this is tell, 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 and tell, 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 tell. tell. Show, don't tell. Um, just to ram this, just to crowbar this in and just go, here you are, here's a message. It's like... You know, what do they think is going to happen? Uh, someone watching on BBC One, your average BBC One viewer, and it's like, oh, darling, darling, yes, darling, there's a message for you in the television. They left a message for you. Oh, tell them I'll read it later and get back to them. What message was it? Uh, I think it was about how in colonial times we write buggers to people. Oh, right, I'll read that message later. You know, there's, there's, no one wants this fucking message, bro, you know, or gal. You just take it home and shove it up your ass. Because it's like, look, anyone could make that connection with anything about invasion. Do you know what I mean? That, that really pisses me off. Um, it, it's, it's almost like a lot of these people, like, I've always gone about colonialism for fucking decades. You know, to anyone that bothered to listen. No one would listen. 
it, it's 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 like recently the people have sort of just they they feel like they've just discovered it and and think that oh well, no one's ever thought about it like this yeah would you know about this have you heard what happened for 400 years whatever it was do you know have you heard that what they did it was a bit it was a bit naughty i was like oh really i never would have thought it like that do you know i never thought i, I thought they were just welcoming him with open arms and they said hello how i say that look at you look at you with your no shoes digging in the dirt with your mucky hands well we're going to bop you on and make you do right Okay, listening to me, I am colonial man, and I'm coming here to make you act proper, okay? Here's a Bible, now bloody read it, you idiot. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what, you know, people, it, it's, it's like everyone's suddenly become a, a kid who's discovered masturbation and doesn't know, and no one's talked about it before they got told about it at school or by their weird uncle. They don't know, they just started playing themselves, like, oh my god, this is good. Like, yo, I, I can't wait to tell everybody about this. This is amazing. Now, someone has made a joke along those lines before. Okay, I can't remember who it is. I'd like to give the person credit for it. Um, but someone famous. So, so don't accuse me of joke stealing or nothing. But anyway, it's like, it is, it is that kind of thing that they've got with colonialism. They're like going, oh, did you know? Did you know? Oh, my God, you don't, re- you don't know the truth. As if it's like, who did 9-11 and killed JFK? Oh, do you know? Did you know about colonialism? It's like... Of course we do. We're not fucking idiots, are we? Like, like for thousands of years, this is how the world was. Duh. Do you know what I mean? You know, War of the Worlds being an allegory for colonialism is is as valid as you know the day the Earth stood still. Whichever version, the sixties or fifties version, whenever it came out, or the Keanu Reeves version, doesn't matter which version. That could be an allegory for colonialism. Because you've got this alien who thinks he's well advanced. Oh, I'm coming from you with better technology and to tell you that, you know, if you don't stop with your nuclear arms race, you're all going to die. You know, you could say, oh, it's an, it's an anti-war message. It could also be the same as, you know, the Romans, stemming back to the Romans or the British Empire, just turning up somewhere who, you know, places that don't have the same technology that, that we have you know, aren't as advanced in those sort of regards and like the Romans turned up to Britain and we're all just a bunch of dirty bastards. You know, we pooed in our pants and we didn't wash our hands, we did all sorts of gross stuff and the Romans were like, oh, that's bloody gross. Now listen here, bop. Now you're going to do as we say, you're going to act right, okay, you dirty buggers. Now here's some soap and this is called a bath. Sort yourself out, do you know what I mean? They turned up and going, well, if you don't do things the way we do it, then you are doomed. We know what happens when you don't wash yourselves after pooing yourself. Right? In fact, you shouldn't poo yourself. You should do it in this thing because um, the future for you, my friend, isn't going to be very bright. It's not very bright. It's not going to be very good. Do you know what I mean? So you, could, you could use... That film as an allegory. You know, some weird spaceman comes out with his fancy clothes and his fancy spaceship and says, well, you know, if you keep acting like this, things ain't going to be good. You need to be more like me. Super cool chill man that doesn't poo himself. It's the, you know, it's the same. You could do the same thing. It's, it's just not very good. I mean, just, just ramming that in there and forcing people to listen to a message. It's like, do you know what? Do you, do you know, if there is a message, then let people find it. Show the message. You know, there, there's, there's, there's loads of different allegories in loads of different films. Otherwise, you're going down the path of like, oh, this is exactly what it is, you know? It's not, and it's just it's just very annoying, you know. And it's very annoying that all all films and all comedy now what has to have some like if it's mainstream has to have some sort of left wing message in it. Like, no, it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Imagine if films, imagine it, turn it, flip it around, yeah, and and imagine all films have some ultra conservative message in it. Like, it'd be just as whack. It'd be just as whack. Imagine if James Bond every time he had po- premarital sex. Because he sleeps with a lot of birds, right? And just a lightning bolt shot out his dick and killed a kid. Every time he had sex, you know, without putting a ring on it. You know, as a, as a fucking message. Here's your message. Here's your message. Did you get the message? Here's the message. Do you know what I mean? And he's like, well, I don't serve queen or country. I serve small government. The borough of Kensington and Chelsea only. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, this is a whack shit, bro. Fuck off. Do you know what I'm saying? 
know what I'm saying? No, oh, Miss Money Penny, I will not flirt with you. I'm not even married. I'm a virgin. Like, come on, man. Just stop. Just make good stuff. And don't don't adapt good stuff and make it bad. I mean, like I say, I haven't seen it, but come on. That, that's, that line is, is almost as bad as... No, in fact, it's probably worse. And there, I've brought this up before. There's a film called Volcano. Or is it Dante's Peak? Basically, Dante's Peak and Volcano came out. It is Volcano. They came out the same year. You know, there was a period of time where, like, a similar blockbuster would come out. They compete against each other. They're both about a volcano. Whereas Volcano is about a volcano that suddenly appears in L.A. So you know where you are. It's bonkers territory. But at the end of Volcano, because the volcanic ash cloud, you know, covers everyone um, in grey soot. There's like, there's this little black kid, because you can tell he's a black kid, because he looks like a little black kid. And then there's a little white kid, because you could tell he's a white kid, he's a little white kid. Except, they're both covered in fucking grey volcanic ash. And the little black kid goes, look, we're all, we all look the same. Yes, there was a message at the end of Volcano, the film. I think Tommy Lee Jones was in it. A film about a volcano in LA. There was a message... No, don't be silly. So, you know, stick your messages up your ass. Just make something good. And it doesn't matter, like it's not, and you could do something better about colonialism than this, Do you know? Because any alien invasion film could be something like that. It's like everyone thinks a zombie film is like, oh, it's representative of voters and consumerism or something. It's like, well, maybe it's just because people haven't got any good ideas and make a zombie film. Do you know what I mean? Just, just leave it out, would you, bro? You know, well, why didn't you reference something that's more poignant about now? It's like, we don't need to be told about colonialism. It's like, going, you know, for, for thousands of years, this is how shit went down. People like conquering. And now we're in a very new period of time where we just, where it's kind of frowned upon. And it's like, oh, what do we do now? Well, now you get Silicon Valley trying to conquer the world in a different way. Uh-huh. Why didn't you use that as a fucking allegory, you limp-wristed dick? Anyway. I wondered last week whether this was really the time to be adapting once again H.G. Wells' 19, again, 1989 disaster novel. Disaster novel? Like, do you, you don't know the fucking year, or is this a joke? Well, that's the independence. Hard to tell, isn't it? The tale of an unknown foreign species arriving in England, destroying natural order of things. Surely such a story might yeah, feed, feed into xenophobic Brexit rhetoric. Well, there you go. Of course it would. Is that why they did it? Saying, well, this, they might think this is a pro-Brexit thing. Put a stupid message in at the end of it, could you please, so everyone doesn't think it's pro-Brexit. I mean, what is going on, you nutbags? It's clear from tonight's episode, however, the writer Peter Harness's intentions were the opposite. Oh, oh, imagine that. It was in t- it was open to interpretation. Oh, well, we can't let that happen. Well, we couldn't let something be open to interpretation. That would be bad. We can't let people have their own views on something. No, 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 no. And then he's attempting to make more explicit the theory that this is an anti-colonialist allegory. I'm just not sure he's managed it. Yeah, he probably didn't manage it. That's why it, you definitely don't manage it if you have to like have a line like that at the end of a fucking show. But one thing, people who don't know better smacks of well-meaning condescension. Well, therefore, it's very accurate a portrayal of modern-day lunatics that write for this newspaper. And the monologue... That closes the show. Well, we'll get to that. The episode itself jumps erratically between the present day, which has been transposed from Victorian to Edwardian times. Oh, so it's not. It's not set in Victorian times. They just moved it to Edwardian times. Why? Why can't you just set in the Victorian times and the apocalyptic future in the former? Do you know? I don't care. George is, an, is incapacitated because he drank some rather unpleasant-looking water. Blah blah blah. Despite their best efforts. They are picked off one by one. Each person speared through the torso and then eaten by the aliens. It's unpleasant stuff, but having been teased for two whole episodes, the monsters, when they're finally seen in all their gory glory, are just little Stranger Things light. In the red-hued flash forward, meanwhile, Amy and a scientist friend, Ogilvy, Robert Carlyle, are studying the cursed red weed that has destroyed the land they can kill the crops. Her son, George Jr., is starving and his sickness is getting worse, says Amy. With an earshot of George Jr., which seems a bit insensitive, there is a glimmer of hope. Ogilvy okay, has a theory that the aliens, who seemingly died soon after arriving on Earth, were killed not by the army, but by disease caught from the humans they ate. This might 
just be the key to restoring humanity, though whether it deserves to be restored is a sticky issue. The worst comes a few minutes later, right at the close. George Jr. asked Amy to tell him about life before the aliens landed. Where I grew up, people had brown skin, she says, <laughs> in a soothing bedtime voice of Telangana, India, one of the provinces of the British Empire which she spent most of her privileged life. Often they were very poor, didn't always have enough to eat. But you know what? They were so cheerful and so happy. <laughs> That's the bit they don't like. It is beyond patronising. <clears throat> well, it's clearly written by an idiot. That's the, well, of course, that's the bit the independent don't like. <laughs> they didn't have enough to eat, but you know what? They were so cheerful and so happy. For all its good intentions, the series has never really worked out what its moral message is supposed to be. And what we're left with just isn't sharp, innovative, or entertaining enough to get away with it. Well, usually it is. I mean, you know, this, this makes a change. <laughs> Do you know, they were so cheerful and so happy. Do you know what? Poor people are fucking happy. Do you know most of the time? Do you, do you realise that a lot of poor people are very fucking happy? Right? I, I don't know if this is news to you. You know. Have you not heard the expression, more money, more problems? Yeah? Well, you wouldn't understand that. You work for the independent, I suppose. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about that.